This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We're on the road in Durango, Colorado, at Fort Lewis College, which graduates more Native Americans than any four-year college in the United States. I am Amy Goodman. But we're going now to New York, where Dennis Banks is, the legendary Native American activist uh, from the Ojibwe tribe. In 1968, he co-founded the American Indian Movement. A year later, he took part in the occupation of Alcatraz Island in California. In 1972, he assisted in Ames' Trail of Broken Treaties, a caravan of numerous activist groups across the United States to Washington, D.C., to call attention to the plight of Native Americans. That same year, Ames took over the Bureau of Indian Affairs building in Washington, D.C. In early 1973, the American Indian Movement took over and occupied Wounded Knee on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation for 71 days. Earlier this year, he led a cross-country walk from Alcatraz to Washington, calling for the release of imprisoned Native American activist Leonard Peltier, who's been held for 35 years. Dennis Bank joins us in New York this weekend. He served as a jurist in the Russell Tribunal on Palestine. We'll get to that in a moment. But as we uh, broadcast today on the federal holiday known as Columbus, Columbus Day, that others call Indigenous Peoples Day. Dennis Banks, can you share your experience as a Native American in this country? Well, first of all, I've been uh, I've been watching uh, your program this morning, uh, and with the, with these young people uh, from from the college, and I want to say that I feel great that you know that the young people are are are. are really getting up there and speaking and it, it feels like now I you know I'm almost 80 years old I can I can I can sit back and retire you know and say look our young people are taking over and that's great that's that's what I'd like to see uh, I'm, I'm very impressed with the, with the students you had on there this morning but uh, I was going to say are we still talking about Columbus Day you know it's been so what it's been four years since I talked to Amy uh, this is, uh, you know, when the longest walk uh, two arrived in Washington D.C., and now uh, we're talking about. Uh, we should be talking more. Uh, I, I don't want to talk about Columbus, but I will talk about this day uh, in South Dakota, which I, th which I thought would be the last one to adopt a day like this as a Native American day, but they have moved forward and they've proclaimed this day as Native American Day. And it is a day for uh, observation, celebration, and re you know, looking at at the at the um, contributions that Native people have made, not only in South Dakota, but in Minnesota and, and all around Indian country. And that's what that's what this day should be about. Um, I, I don't want to reflect about you know uh, the lost explorer. Uh, you know, they they've got towns named after him. Like Custer, South Dakota, is named after Custer, a man who was, uh, you know, bent on killing Native people. Uh, but people honor those those kind of uh, renegades and those kind of rogues. Um, so, I, I want to look at uh, at the more positive things, and that that's, uh, and it's good. That I'm glad that you're you're carrying this day, though. I, I really am. And being at Fort Lewis, I was, I, I spoke there maybe two three times. Uh, Dennis Banks, for people who are not familiar with these boarding schools um, uh, that uh, Native Americans were put into over the years, can you describe what your experience was? Where did you live? Where were you sent? What happened to you in these schools growing up? The, the, I was in the boarding schools when the when punishment was very severe. Uh, if you ran away. This was during the early 40s. I, I was taken to boarding school when I was four years old and taken away from my, my mother and my father, my grandparents, who I, I stayed with most of the time, and uh, just abruptly taken away and then put into the boarding school 300 miles away from our home. Um, and, you know, the beatings began uh, immediately, uh, the, 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 almost the de-Indianizing program. It was a terrible experience that the, that the American government was, was experimenting with. And that was trying to destroy the culture in, in, in the person, destroy the, the, the Indianness, and then save the human being, save them, kill an Indian, save the man. Uh, that was that was 
you know, the, the description of what this policy is about, about trying now, to— Now, the government ran the schools? The U.S. government uh, paid—of uh, course, they, they ran a lot of the schools themselves, uh, but they also delegated a lot of it to the, uh, to, to, uh, the, the, the Christians, Christian communities. The Catholics had some. The Episcopal, Episcopalians had some. The Lutherans had some. Methodists had some. And so it was like it was a, like a, a, a complicit. There is complicity in between the churches and the state, and in, in, in taking care of the Indian problem, solving the Indian problem, and trying to change. Uh, who Dennis, were. where had where had you lived? Where had you lived, and where were you brought to school? I lived on the federal uh, on the uh, or rather on the on the um, Beach Lake Indian Reservation, where I was born, in northern Minnesota, and I was taken to. Uh, a boarding school 300 miles away to the south, a southernmost part of, of Minnesota, the southwestern part, called Pipestone Indian School. I stayed there three years, uh, six and years. How, the, go ahead. Uh, how did you communicate with your family, and how often did you get to see them? Did you get to talk to them? Uh, never. Uh, never, you know, they, 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 they cut off all all communication with with your with your parents and and a lot of letters which which I found later uh and uh, I was I stayed there for 6 years without communicating to uh, with my with my parents at all and and finally they, they let us go home for 6 years of course we couldn't speak the language uh we couldn't speak uh, only english and and what these young people were talking about there was, but there was severe punishment uh for for running away from that kind of uh, system, I ran away. I kept running away. Almost once a week, I'd run away from those schools. They'd catch me. They would bring bring me back to the school, beat me, and it was it was terrible. I mean, there was other kinds of punishment that we went through as well, and it it was now that it was a t uh, that that kind of experience. I still remember what it is like today. And I, I have a friend. Uh, uh, who who's been who been my friend for over over seventy years now, and we remember those days. They were they were, they were we stuck together. A lot of people stuck together and just being together. That's what saved a lot of us uh, from uh, from terrible uh, consequences of, of speaking. And but eventually uh, they you know they, they kept beating me down. And I kept so I started I started learning English and I started learning who the presidents were. I started learning all that stuff. And and then they let me go home for 30 days, six years. And I asked my mother, I said, "Why didn't you write to me?" And, and she, you know, and she says, "I did, but I never, I never questioned beyond that." And then there was they sent me to another boarding school in North Dakota, another 200 miles away. Um, I was there for three years, and then then after that, same thing, no no, only English, you know, corporal punishment. Um, and and then I went home for another 30 days, asked my mother, why is it you didn't write to me again? She said, I did, then I did. Then I, they sent me to another boarding school in, in South Dakota, further away, so another 400 miles. I kept running away from these schools, and I finally ran away from the last one, and I finally made it home. And so I wanted to say, uh, Amy, that this not only happened to to people in North Dakota and South Dakota and Minnesota, but all across the country, thousands upon thousands of young students, were, uh, native students, were taken from their homes, and some were forcibly taken, some because of economic times uh, allowed that to happen, uh, but it was always taking them away from the parent, separate them from the parents for long periods of time, and and what she did with me, and all of a sudden I lost my family relationship with my mother. I lost that feeling uh, with my mother and because I thought she abandoned me. Um, and it wasn't until almost just three years ago when, when my daughter was, they were doing a documentary on Dennis Banks, and they found, they went to, in, in the federal depository records in Kansas City, and she called me, and she said, Dan, we found, Dad, she said, we found your, uh, we found your school records. And I said, bring them back. So she brought them back, and I started looking at them, and she says, Dad, we also found 
something else. He handed me a shoebox, and I opened up the shoebox, and those were letters, letters from my mother. And I started opening them up, and I started reading them. And then the second one, there was a letter to the superintendent of the school. It said, here's five dollars. Please send my children, my, my son, back home to me. And I couldn't finish reading these letters and because I was just tearing up. And, and so I went to the graveside. My, my mother had passed away. When she did pass away, I, I, I went to bury her, but there was no emotions with me. And then going there this time with the letters, and I was reading the letters. I had a chair sitting right by her grave, and I started reading these letters. And and I knew that she loved me then. I mean, even even now, even at this moment, I feel that that man. It, it's a hard it's a hard experience to tell people, but but I tell them anyway. I tell what happened because it was a terrible terrible experience. And but it, but it failed failed miserably. I mean, but even today, uh, I. I mean, I, I, I know some of the language. I don't know, I don't know all the language. I, I, I know a lot of songs uh, which came back to me, uh, but the language, uh, it seemed like you, uh, you, you, you start, you, you want to say something and you remember the beatings and stuff like that. And so, um, but it was terrible. 